a first map that had an exceptionally close first half. Began with momentum for Sharks once they switched over to the CT side, but Furia were just too much. And there was so many pivot rounds, Mohan, that could have changed the outcome of the game. That's what you love to see when it comes to the first semifinals of today. Yeah, and Furia won the majority of the pivot rounds. They did lose both pistols. They absolutely yeah. needed to. The game came close. They pulled out that late buy that you think, all right, maybe they save one more just for the extra rifles, but then the op from Art just catches them off guard. Super smart IGL, man. He did so many good things that game. A buy where it's like, even if there was that inkling in the back of the head for Sharks that there was going to be a purchase, I don't think they expect an op at all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like and Art with the extra 4K, he's like, yeah. maybe he saw it as an opportunity. I might be able to get a free kill this round. There's, they're maybe not going to expect this. Whether or not it was part of the game plan specifically, it sure worked out that way. Yeah. You know, instant op clash to begin that 29th round. And from there, we just had Sharks trying to scramble back in. But they couldn't get any footing when it came to apartments. We saw like two straight up apartments pushes, one with guns off of a pause, the second an eco round, and, and it was just a solid a hold. You know, sure, sometimes Arch became in question. Sometimes they'd be able to bully their way up lane, but that apartment door was shut. Today's the day we get a vertigo, vertigo, and it's with it's just so exciting that it's two teams that we know want to play it. It's the, right. The team we didn't know if they wanted to play it was Sharks, and the team we know was ready for it's Furia. So this this will be awesome, man. Um, it's a super fast-paced map. Uh, there's it's 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 somewhat simplistic, but it's also very different from a lot of other maps. And um, there's definitely going to be a lot of innovation here. I mean, there if there's ever going to be saving strats in a match, it's going to be you know in the early stages of a brand new one. So this this will be pretty fun to watch. Hopefully, lots of people fall off the map. Vinny just did. Yeah. That's why he's smiling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I legit just watched it. So our two teams warm up, and I believe we're now ready to go. So come one, come all, calling all Verta Globals. <laughs> yeah, and even if you're not, we're not discriminating. No, I do. Okay. I'm certified. Yeah, certified Verta Globals. Oh man, this should be good. Oh, it's still the ninth round, so we got a little bit to go. Let's take a quick look at KS Serato's stat lines. It's just the last match specifically. Kind of quiet, but at the same time, impactful. B, B timings for rushes on T-side are so intense. Yep. Um, it's just insane. I, even coming up the A ramp, like, T's can make so much ground rushing. So if they're going to incentivize that a lot, then it's it's going to be a lot of nades spent in the early round for the CTs. And there's, there's value in holding mid, but... There's a number of ways that it can be used against you or for you. Uh, this knife round might matter a lot to these teams. Furia goes ahead and picks up this one, Able J with the three piece, and they're going to opt to start on the T side. Uh, no, they've switched. Oh, they've switched? Yes. Sir. Okay. Are they going to opt to start on the CT side then? So, Mo, do you want to place a bet with me? Sure, let's place a bet. How many rounds? I bet Furia win. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> How many rounds, if any, uh -huh. before we have? A casualty by gravity. A casualty by gravity. Who's falling um, to their death? Who's? How long is it going to take? Oh, we're doing pro line here. Like, who's falling to their death? Plus, right. like, what round? Or uh, just give me the round. Okay, I, I will say someone falls to their death. I'm going to say I'm going to say no one falls to their death this game. Okay, that's fair. Okay, how you about that? You do have two prepared teams, right? So I mean, there's not many spots you can fall off. Yeah. But uh, there is always that tantalizing jump, and it, it makes it makes B retakes so nice. Then there's this one here. Oh, well, I'm sorry, you at home, you can't see the warm-up like we can, but it's it's off the scaffolding of the B site down to the bottom of B ramp. And it's, it's really hard to pull off in like a useful manner, but it's a good way to just evacuate the bomb. It's actually really useful if you do have purposeful flashes for that portion. But as we swoop down into the map, folks, here we go. Dream hacks first vertigo. Yes, should be fantastic. I went through. We both played a lot of matchmaking before this. Yes, sir. I went back to check out all the wall banks, all the available demos to see what we can gather. And I'm sure these two teams have done the same. It's been a lot of scrimmages um, that the demos aren't available for. So I don't know if these teams have even played each other on Vertigo. So push up the A ramp slowly here on the T side. And it's a retake situation on A. Yeah. Common setup. Vinny's just playing back A. Waits for heads on display. We have some utility coming out now from the T's. Sharks, they're going to blanket the bomb site with smoke, so we should have ourselves a 5v5 retake on our hands. The question will always be, is there a flank? Do we have players down and beneath? And it doesn't seem as so. They're going to come heavy through the elevators. RCF pops three noggins and gives his team a man advantage here as also 
the bomb's been put down, but Ark hot on his heels. Brings this back into the even 2v2, and they have a smoke of their own. JNT, who never saw a flank, is now going to have to try to come up this, but it's going to be a stick. It's a stick inside the smoke. JNT can't connect his shot. Furia winning CT pistol. Good cover there. Uh, and jumping up on the back of default's huge. You know, that little headshot angle, obviously, is, is enormous, but with that smoke, it allowed him to stood up there and just be very difficult target to hit. So Sharks, you know, they get what they want. They get into the A site. Furia know the bomb's going to be down. It's, there's a lot of pressure there to perform a retake, especially, yep. you know, with so many moving parts, but they make it happen. Now the CTs, what's the setup? They've moved out two towards A. It's a rush towards B with AKs leading the charge. They're going to try to get up here quick. They've got Abel pinned down behind big box. Bride grenades from window. Ooh. A nice touch. Very useful at times. These look. Molotovs can be used to just screw them into the open. And look at this, they've corralled the T's around the side of the site they'll have to go. We do still have Leo hidden somewhere in here. Oh, no, there you go. Three kills back. Sharks, quick clash. And that's when this B site can get really awkward. Even despite the greatest utility we've seen, we have the T's come out with a man advantage, but such little health. Smoke next to green could give Kayserado a different avenue, but he's just going to spam the corner, try to clear it. There's an easy kill. Eliminated. Vinny gets knack, and then, in fact, JNT will fall. So RCF is just going to play around the outside. And the bomb, oh, the bomb is planted for his peak, but Vinny saves his teammate, and we have Furio with a second round. Oh, they pull off a really, really difficult post plant. Now, the thing is, you can see Sharks super uncomfortable. They did not find good spots. That smoke went up. They were still moving. Right. So being... Being comfortable in that situation, no, that's that's something they've got to work on. They've got to pick spots that they think are the best, prioritize them, you know, hope to see more composure in the future because they should have had somewhat of an advantage. But um, it is a relatively open map. The retakes will be something that CTs can rely on a lot of the time. And it was cool mid control there from Furia. They used that to abuse grenades. And they threw some really great grenades. Oh, top mid control. Top mid control is what we talk about for CTs. Tends to seem as though they can grab it aggressively. But it costs them so much health. Sure, they get these kills, but take note, Sharks, they just had pistols. And they've actually, well, stacked up some costs. And these are my favorite Vertigo moments, the mid-rounds. Because there's there's so much audio cues that can be heard from everywhere that Exit's going to have to fall silent. But does he expect Art to be down by quick? No. Yeah, the amount of roaming that can be done um, is crazy. I don't know if you can drop Elevator Shaft silently off of the sign. I don't believe so. You can hit it, but... Haven't been able to do it. Uh, so, that's, you know, there's just so, you can get so far so quickly, um, which is an interesting thing. But Furious appear to already really want mid control because a lot of their nades, these set nades, these kind of like precise set nades are based off of it. So if the T's don't want to respect that, how do they get in to the rounds? A is always going to be open in their setups, at least so far. Vinny's comfortable playing back. A really good way to jump spot. Very hard spot to react to. Preemptive grenade comes out from the CTs. T's in a very, very reserved default. Terrace have already Molotovved out sandbags as well. That corner piece here on ramp. It could be a really good play to just tuck a CT behind there and just wait for the Terrace to cross. Very difficult to clear without exposing yourself to players on the actual bomb site, but this is it. Mid control, top mid for KS Serato. Um, I wonder how long they hold on to this and how aggressively, and if Sharks are just trying to wait it out. They don't feel comfortable moving up just yet. But what exactly are they waiting for? Haven't really pressured much portions of the map. They're going to have a difficult job of getting in here, maybe. Are you ready for it? They've got their smokes out. So Full-fledged execution, deep smokes. Molly on the bomb site itself, smoking back on the deep door. But they do leave the corner. The kills come in easy peasy. Three before finally JNT answers back. These are cool smokes. You've got it on wall bang, elevator, and that deep portion where Art was trying to opt from. They leave the site open for peaks. Welcome it even as the Mollies burn, but exit back on tarp. 
is going to have to try and 1v4. Gets the first headshot, but that's always such a problem. When your after plant is so fixated on ramp, they can be these bomb defuse sticks over and over. One of the slight variations that's actually nice to watch is, is post plants where the bomb is planted on this far right corner, the most extreme portion of the plant zone over towards sandbags. Because if then any CT wants to stick this, they have to be fully exposed. And it opens up the after plant to be as back as possible. You saw him standing over towards tarp in the deep corners of ramp. Well, if you want the advantage, you plant that closer corner. Back to mid for Furia. Uh, good post plant. They, it's, it's impressive just seeing them choose CT side in the first place. And now you see why a lot of their counter grenades are fantastic. Art, right. you know, he was opting from a position, did some damage, got one with the volley. And Vinny has been good placing his grenades as well. It's not going to be easy rounds for Shards and just getting the bomb down. It looks like they're taking damage every single round. So once again, refreshing the smoke at middle, a, a key part of the puzzle for Fioria. Yeah, part and, that hasn't been contested outside of the eco. And they aren't trying to, Sharks are not trying to force their way back into middle. But we can see how well Furia are using it. They can kind of just torment this B ramp. And I think that's their way around of having to fight from this crossfire, just fighting down the stairs and just throwing all their grenades over Tetris. Keep jumping utility. You can Molotov and smoke off that hallway for what feels like forever. You can see the passiveness coming out of Sharks now. Molly pops and they are going to try to re-aggress into this. 40 seconds, so even once this fire fades, they have to win the duel versus KS Serato, who has a teammate just behind him, or had past tense. Art gets popped first. Leo doing a good job with this double entry, but 30 seconds remains. And that's going to add a layer of pressure here to the mid-round. We'll set smoke to block out mid. I don't know if this means a door player just yet. Yeah, no, this yeah. is going to meet him at A. Vinny, he's hearing footsteps. He's going to push a good time Ooh, to peek. And a hard trade from Leo, but he grabs it. There you go. Cleared out that B site. Blanket off the elevator. JNT in the committed sandbag after plant. Bombs planted next to blue. How did Fury get into this? This time they have a flank. Wow, Leo almost caught by this. Molly should push Yuri behind Tarp unless he waits. He's gonna go for it. Hyper extends pass, making a lot of noise, but there's a sandbags player. He spotted. Oh no, Yuri! He almost changes his aim to Abel J, who does clear sandbags and has to just get this last five health off of Leo, who's looking for the ace. He dies in the end, but is there time? Is there time for this defuse? It seems so most certain. Wow. Five rounds for Furia. Another retake one. Uh, and that was such a great round from Sharks. They got onto the site really early. They performed a tough split through middle into CT with two players. They met each other quickly. It was a Hail Mary play. And oh my god, those entries from Leo are amazing. They're like, a killer. And this trade was so important. Well, you say important, but he ended up losing the round. No way, he also gets that one too. So just men trying to cover all bases for his team, but everybody else just falling apart. Pretty intense, but again, we're seeing how, how and I also love how Sharks like were persistent about fighting middle. They waited out all of the grenades. Fury were like, don't come here, don't come here, don't come here. They waited, and they finally got it. An insane shot there from Art. Yeah, made possible by the lack of mid control here for Sharks. <laughs> oh my god. They know exactly what kind of fight they- Wow! Oh my god. <laughs> peek me once, but don't peek me twice. Yuri, close crossfire. He has to cover the back of Abel. They have to push past the flash. was so well timed, but oh man! They don't spot those corners, and it's a trio of kills off of Furious Hold. Leo, again with everything to do, kicks this off with a headshot, gets caught on the jump, and six for Furia straight. Oh my god. And that's a new way that uh, Furia have won the round. Once again, it, it does have to do with mid. You know, Art can't jump up on Tetris, take right. those peaks, get the info if they don't have mid control, so centering around that. And then uh, the crossfire within the site, they focus them into pushing towards quad, and then from there, just iced them out. I, I don't know if Sharks saw the crossfire in the past, but that's not the first time Furia have staged up their two players in those same positions. Now they'll look for this boost to be abused again. It's a duel that's not going to be won most of the time by a rifle, so they've probably got to find a more consistent response. Although Art did go one for one that previous time. He's been peeking he off dropped, the flash. He dropped ladder. Art's going to fast flank this A-hold, but Yuri and Vinny get the job done regardless. That's full information. They know it's going to be B. Molotov at the top of the stairs buys time for the rotate. And all the while, you do still have Art who can double back behind them. 
still, it's the players on site that serve as an issue again. They weren't able to clear it out last round. You saw that flurry of kills coming off of Furia. 4v2, and wow, Yuri, quick flick back for the headshot, leaves Knack alone. Now, there's a low HP player in the background, that's Vinny. But there's, yeah, Cancerado in green. That's gonna happen a lot. You're gonna get called, you're gonna get caught off by these regular angles just because they're all brand new in some regard. Fury at 7-0 here versus Sharks, holding strong. Had to go through and eat and tear through a lot of rifle rounds, but they've had almost no trouble. And um, you pointed out there was a, a that uh, art drop down. So they was that the first time that he did drop? That's the first time I've so noticed. They've been it. taking mid control every single time, but not abusing the drop down. Yeah. So been re have remained inconspicuous. And did they even know that he dropped down on that round? I don't believe so, because yeah. by the time he got to the A site, that's when his teammates had already held it. I mean, when you go for that elevator drop, the best time to do it is when you when you think it's not an all in on A. Because if you have four to five players on a terrorist side going A, then you know there's at least one guy who has attention turned because it's it's like the most obvious obvious flank hit. But when you see presence at the bottom of B ramp, you know those players that aren't hitting the A site are actually split up. And that's when you're gonna find your timing, you know, when, when the T's are stretched thin. So I, I'm, I'm not surprised to see him kind of reserved with that move. But now that he's pulled it off one time, curious to see if he, you know, feels more comfortable doing it again. Yeah, I mean, if he didn't get spotted, then he can kind of just do it again if he'd like to. Maybe save it for a rifle though. Here we have a, a, a half buy. There's a lot of Molotovs, actually. There's only two smokes, four Molotovs here being bought. Just gonna blanket this B site with Mollies, Let's perhaps? Let's see it, man. It's good to molly out that back quad around the uh, the rafters of the site. And you get them on the close corners, the Tetris box, just like that. But smoke grenades are gonna put out most of the threat. Art's still just trying to shave off a head, but RCF gets ahead and finds himself a kill to Yuri. Here comes Art striking down from window. Leo able to cover, but Abel's still inside all of this. And he hears it. He hears their movement, so he emerges. Just but they're so far gone. This afterplant is deep. Oh, he's got backs oh turned. God. There he goes. Got the element versus JNT. And almost three immediately. But Leo, 46 health, is going to have Knack to bring it back. Helps him out. And the counter terror is stranded in close proximity. It's Leo alone. And he knows that Vinny's on bomb. Tapped it once. It's going to get him to peak. He has to try and stop this. And it was all just a ruse. The Dude. defuse comes through eight rounds straight. They do it. Another defuse. Man, that round got so chaotic just because all of this, the Molotovs that came on the site were just countered by smokes. Yeah. And then it was just the entire thing. It was just a big cloud, basically. Um, a, co a cool ego strap from Sharks. They found a, a good way to get a bomb down. They did with high numbers. But once again, Fury holding on to mid control means that they're overstacked on B with fast rotation stay every single time. So they're like forcing Sharks to respond to this, and we haven't seen a response yet. Well, we did once when they actually split towards A. They even lost that round. And it was an eco. I think. I haven't seen much come from wall bangs. Furia, in fact, have had a really deep A setup. You know, we haven't even had anybody trying to get aggressive over towards sandbags. Sometimes counter terrorists will do this. A round like this would be perfect. You know, as long as you don't extend into the scope of JNT, you can you can very much cheat away your second A player and just hold like a 4-1. It's gonna happen now, even though he's not pushed too far up. See these how much control do they have at mid right now, Case Rado? I mean, he's just the one here. High frag position. Kind of best rifler on the team. But he's in no man's land. Doesn't have cover. Has the off angle, and I guess that's good enough. Two headshots for him. Oh Even adds a God. third. Wow. There has been no footing for Sharks when it comes out mid. Yeah, and, the, and the, again, it's just abused. Now Nack has to worry about this Tetris boost. He's like walking into the B site versus two people who are ready to see him. JNT at least gets one kill on A, but it's uh, it, it, this round is too far gone. They don't have bomb control. He's lost a lot of his health now. And since they know where he is, you know, it's easy drops here. Yeah. Art goes ahead, abuses the fact that he can take the elevator shaft, op pick on the fallback. Furia, 9-0. to zero. And it's so, it's they're, they're looking so good, man. I'm loving these CT setups. I'm loving the retake grenades that they've got. Case Serato's playing basically the same angle here that he's been playing. Yep. Like, he delays for as long as possible. Then they come out and they try to kill him. That was literally the easiest time to kill him. They knew exactly where he was, they just couldn't hit the shot. Not as fast as he could. 
Deep Molly preventing any kind of hyper aggressive B play. Uh, I think, and they're rolling the grenades in because of how fast the T's can actually get out. But wow, that the, flash! The value four it's full still blind. going. Goes for it again. This time, two heads turned. They just—they know he's there. They're just like timidly looking for this pick in not a very safe way at all. Oh, that's gonna close. close. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's inside of it, and like it's such a such a narrow position for them to try and wrap around the site. You know, it's just it's one player wide. Big play from Leo in the open. Oh wow! Oh, no scope, the ball. close like a shotgun. Oh! Art and Vinny down into the 2v2, and he almost hits that flick back. In fact, oh tags JNT. He does the damage. But Leo has been this one-man show. He is on for his second attempt at an ace. Second 4K already. Fake plant, peaks wide, oh and God. Vinny can't have them both. But he does get one. So close. That's insane, bro. Dude, Art is insane, man. Yeah. Those sh Almost all four shots were hit. That was so crazy. He just loves that. I mean, jumping over Tetris, no scope into the air. Those last two shots were just off the mark slightly, and even wall banked one of them, right? Right. Man, that was, that was dope. Like, he, he almost just robbed that 3K. Yeah. How gnarly would that have been? And then Vinny almost had the chance to 1v2. And we're back so, to square one. Took 10 rounds, Launders, but they've broken through. Yeah. But, pff, man, didn't expect to see, like, a lopsided scoreline no matter what. Um, it's also been our third 1v1 round. First time the T's have taken it. Of the nine CT rounds we've had one, five of them by way of defuse. You can just... Oh my god. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! <laughs> that could have gotten much worse. <laughs> you can see how many liberties they take with grenades, though. Yep. Like, on the CT side, they're using so many grenades. They're just tossing them out early. A lot of them, the nade dump at mid. And uh, sharks are sick of it. They're just gonna walk up. This is quiet contact. Uh oh. Abel gonna get an assist with that. KS Serato comes in to help, but Knack has already started to work around. Leal is up. They have cleared closer corner. Abel kind of forfeits a little bit of sight control, but it's all right. They maintain man advantage for only a moment. It's KS Serato on a 3K. Is he gonna have to do it all himself? Vinny's full health. He gets on that bomb. Leo's in here just flashing, trying to find contact. Can. Oh, they can smoke again. Yep. This is really starting to screw with them. Wild spray down. He kills one player, but it's... Oh, wow. No kid, no kid. Oh, wow. I was going to say, kills the one. Could have thought it was the bomb diffuser. Mm -hmm. And if only he would able to stick it. Yeah, if he if it wasn't a 10-second diffuse, would have just been like, all right, well, there's a bait. Yeah. That's an easy stick. They it, saved the plant. That, uh, that round, they didn't have a lot to work with. They almost pull off the retake one more time. And that's actually been the worst part for Sharks, is that they're getting the bomb down a lot. Yeah, very true. They're just not winning in the post plants. The majority of rounds, they've got plants. But finally, finally, Launders, they can have a sigh of relief. They have broken the economy of Furia, who just get desperate at the B site, charge four players headstrong into a solid setup. Passive positioning here from the AK players as they just tippity-tap through the heads of Furia. And it's only KS Serato to have to be found. But he has bomb. <laughs> How nice. Will he just get a free kill off of this? It's gonna have to, like, Batman swoop down on this. Currently 13-3-7. They spot him. Something really do. passive about this. It's been picked back up. Exit. There it's it is. Down. Bomb down. Now he's not going to go get his gun. Thinks they're trying to split him. See, here's the problem: is if, if he could run away without being without being heard, he could like fly through the window, try to section off the first player. He can hear exactly where they are. Yeah. Squeaky open or closed? Won't matter if he goes window still. Oh wow! That's damage dealt. Here's this one. That's oh. aggressive. That's very aggressive. RCF just opens an opportunity for him. But there he goes. Headshot from RCF, third round from Sharks. A little wrench in the works there with bomb control, but uh, I mean, at no point did it look like Furia were going to win that round. Yeah, they played it safe. They just slowed it down. The buy is in. And we know Furia are, he are heavily reliant on grenades. And I think for Sharks right now, they could find an opportunity to try to take mid back fast. Knowing that Furia might be light, um, they might not have a good read on exactly how light, but potentially one of their best chances. They've avoided the early duel once again, and 
Furia will combine in their efforts to make sure that nobody can take mid. So Ark can freely jump around here, spot to be, to play two in the site. I feel like for Sharks, they must be still thinking like, yeah, we get the bomb down on A, the retakes are super close. We might want to try that again. And it could be a late round back to that site. Slowly working out here is the calm of the grenades. Cutting noise is huge. They grouped up. Smoke goes into the site. That's an interesting one. It's not that deep. And it's almost the same smoke the CTs want. Getting funneled to the outside grading is not favorable for the T's, right? So it's a good idea to try and burn out that back quad, but they try to pre-fire Yuri. Leo has flipped by, and in doing so, he clears out green, but Abel's gone uncontested. And now he strikes, drops that opper. Bomb has been cut off with 35 seconds, and KS Dorado with mid control just screws over this T side. They're stranded. They know they have to deal with Abel, but by extending into him, they open themselves to all of these backstabs. KS Dorado does it twice and even finishes the round. Oh my god. 10 for Furia now. Dude, Sharks need to tune into the fact that Furia want them to go B. Yeah. That is like e everything they want. The only way that Sharks can win it be in, in, or the only way that Furia can lose it be in their mind is if uh, Sharks take mid. They take mid, they get those kills, then they hit, hit on the site. But other than that, like, it's just, there's just too many ways to fail without that mid control. Or a way to deal with just Tetris for a while. You know, they can use utility to fake it in a sense, like to, to smoke up there, to leave someone to make sure no one can jump over. But there's even the threat of grenades coming in over, which is the, the next tier of defense that Furia have employed that I think is most interesting. The fact that they're throwing a lot of Molotovs and grenades over the middle wall as opposed to straight out from B. And instead, from the players on the B side, they're just using defensive grenades like their spokes to just funnel them on the outside of the site. The execute was kind of nice, though, from Sharks. They, they, they threw their smokes, they waited. Oh my god, they've actually just walked into me. I don't even know how this happened. That was a chance. Oh, okay, Sir <laughs> It's going for a straight up spam through the door. But now they're on guard. RCF gets a second chance and then pops it through the door. There's an opening here for Yuri to get back into the site, but they must realize B is so compromised. I don't even know how that lurk happened. Just kind of, sometimes you can walk through site. If, if you've got a player on that back quad, you know, timing can really play against you. Bomb plant close green. Smoke screen, not even needed. Vinny just walks right in. JNT fires back and exit has a position on the scaffold as well. So these deep after plant positions pan out. Sharks grabbing a fourth and one more round to go. Got to credit RCF. Getting two kills there after getting spotted and dropping the first spray. Coming back was big. Now Sharks get the, they get the fourth round. They really like going B themselves, which I think is why, you know, this 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 half has been so favored towards Furia. It's like their game plan centered around B, Sharks' game plan centered around B, but yeah. Furia's got slightly better grenades and they win more retakes. Here, Sharks get at least put together like a somewhat decent half. But you gotta expect that the map is gonna be very T-sided, not CT-sided in the beginning. Especially with these intense rush timings. I love the composure here from Sharks, though. Remember, they, they were losing 9-0. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, we could very well be finishing this half with a 10-5 scoreline, which just means, you know, a second half that didn't seem like it was really going to matter suddenly opened for the taking. And we talked about how this, this clash of, like, Sharks wanting B versus Furia's B hold. Well, what's going to happen when we have Fury on the offense? We have absolutely no idea. Don't you write off anyone just yet. Sean Gare has uh, made a good video on this map. Oh, oh my yeah. god. This <laughs> Fast that. flank right down. And there's that crunch from a site. Look at that. They just all culminate together. They do open up the potential for this B site to be lost. But what the, what are the rewards? They've got an extra gun. That's and a cool way to eco. Abel can still hold. And the smoke just allows them to have one fight coming from one direction. The second time we see the shaft drop. And it comes in the 15th round. Talk about... Saving your strats. Vinny, got a clear bomb site. Knack stranded 1v4. Furia just turning up the dial in terms of pressure this round. And it all works out for the better. Knack, my friend. You can just walk off the edge if you want to call it quits. <laughs> An inevitability with Art eventually finding him. So from 9-0, 11-4. That is still pretty decent, and we have an action-packed second half coming up in a bit, folks. Brief break. See you soon.
bomb plants in abundance, retakes a plenty. A first vertigo here for Dreamhack that gave us all sorts of action and composure from sharks. Down 9-0, establishing four at the very end of that close, but now, now the true test. Furia to the T side, and I have to say, Launders, they did look great. They looked amazing, and I really want to see what they do on T side. We saw that there was a heavy focus on middle as CTs, so that, yeah, I Immediately. predicted, yeah, that they were going to go for a lot of middle control because they know how dangerous it is. And, um, oh, oh, they're actually using it for the fast drop, so they made presence. It is going to be a retake situation. CTs just must be a little bit confused as to what's going to happen. There are three dedicated into the B side at the moment. And, and they've gone back again. Oh, they're actually running all the way back. Dude, so look at this. They pulled him. Oh, oh, my God. That, my friend, is the bamboozler, the razzle dazzler, because would... you are just outplayed. That's insane. And then they're throwing the smokes on the site. They're probably not expecting the T's to have rotated out this much. That same smoke we saw from sharks, they're employing it right now to get up the ramp. Thing is, we got three CTs back in position. Just the end of it. Art kind of flashed, but still pushes past green. Three kills. The kill feed flooded to the favor of Furia. And that bomb is down now. So is JNT. Poor Leo's getting flanked from his own spawn. From his own damn spawn. <laughs> That's Furia with a 12th and a pistol in the second oh, half. Oh, man. That just makes me so excited for pistols in the future. Like, the crazy stuff that you can do. That's insane, man. Teams do not want to leave B. And to, to convince a team to leave B, that's huge. They had him, they had them shook. They thought it was going to be an A retake situation for sure. Great audio bluffs there. And again, right back to mid control. Really testing sharks here. And they moved out a couple of CTs, but can they win the duels? They get that first one. There's a player behind Box. So a little surprise, but Art going to be all right with the challenge. Him and Abel tagged up pretty heavy. Good thing there's a door. Yeah. Almost blown away. I just wanted to shout out Sean Garris for kind of making the first really in-depth video theory yeah. striking on this map, and he did predict that would be very tactical, like heavily uh, grenade favored, and uh, we've seen so much of that already from Furia. Um, it's cool. It's so cool that it's shaping up into a map that's based not purely on a lot of side takes and just a lot of mid control. So that's when things get really tactical. Poor Leo. Abel, what you doing down there? And it's cool also the verticality was abused there by Furia, you know? Yep. To make things really, really hard to predict. Oh, first ninja defuse on Vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of firsts to be had. But not this time. Vinny serves as the anchor, gets himself a 13th round for the team, Furia. This is looking tough for Sharks. They'll try to buy right away. I think the thing is here, Furia predicted in the previous map when they didn't have a lot of money for the head armor, mm -hmm. this is a round where you know that's going to happen. They've not got a lot of um, damage grenades, so Furia could just go for something really hard towards B, but we know they like to play slow. Here once again, working fast on day. that mid control, and oh yeah, fast up towards the A site. And they use grenades on middle as well to still just kind of like feign that presence. The lineup through the smoke. Deep A smoke two, so exit. That first point of contact is trying to come in. Does manage to get himself one, but Art looks to replace him, and no, not going to happen. Elevator control maintained, and that's huge for the retake. We talked about the retake on A being very viable, and it's difficult for Furia to hold this back from ramp. Again, especially oh with that plant. Dude, they, they have the post plant, but now they have an extra option. They don't have to fall back to the ramp. They have Yuri here. Now they kind of just want to try to get a kill He's and go. delay. He's got to go. He's so far removed from this situation, but he also doesn't want to make noise. See, this is one of those problematic moments where you've just got a bomb being stuck in the midst of all this. But, oh, Yuri's flank! He nails it! Gets the player off the defuse. There is another to replace, but it's the last one! Yuri's going to go in, and he, oh! he gets it all! Oh, my God! Four kills on the flank. Talk about timing! An unbelievable clutch. He comes through, he grabs the mid-control, flanks, puts four kills together. They had almost been able to stuck that despite him taking his time. It looked like he was so far removed. So far removed. Just dogpiling that smoke grenade, trying to desperately get their hands on the defuse. And they all get mowed down. Yeah, he was composed, he was calm. He came in, that was nuts, dude. And he was the beginning of the round to try to 
trying to bait the attention towards B, bait out some counter grenades early so they can't be retake grenades. And then he ends up being the key piece of the puzzle. You know, that was almost like the like a mirage late mid flank to stop a, a reverse triple plant and in brand new territory. And I think I think there's a good I think there's a good comparison to be drawn between the difficulties that Sharks had in their A after plants and how little they had mid control. You have Yuri in middle from the get-go of the round doing nothing other than standing there, waiting for his moment, and just by having that avenue open, he goes ahead and wins a round. And a crucial one at that. Ten points to the lead of Furia, a masterclass on Vertigo for the moment. JNT's like, what is this? <laughs> Wall smoke. <Yeah. laughs> this map just came out. Yeah. So they've got space created. This is going to be that B split through window, most likely. And it's so difficult to deal with on the anti-eco. But Knack will still get one. Art's going to look to extend the space. He is the bomb carrier in the middle of it all. Or not anymore. He's like, you do it. I got kills to take. I, I love it, man. 21 um, frags for Art. Just recognizing that, I think, you know, you look at any other map, right? And eventually, when the meta is really developed, you can never go directly to sites. You always want to work on mid in some way or another. And they're giving it so much love right now, both on CT side and T side. They've now gone mid every single round in the T side. They did it almost every single round hold, held onto it on CT side. And here they've also given it a different look every time. Yep. In that on the on the first pistol round, they used it to uh, to drop, and then they they used it to drop to make an audible kind of crazy play. Oh, the. Imme immediate push gets shut down as well. Do they have anybody out towards mid working on that at the same time? I'm very curious. Yeah, it looks like they have taken control of it. The CTs are just too scared. They haven't even decided to mess with this at all. Getting completely outclassed. And this is Shark's map pick. Counter window boost. Oh my god. Dude, the amount of variations we're getting out of this so far. Mm -hmm. Real nice, but exits deep position. That's a safe spot to try and deal with it. They go for the boost. Again, something we haven't even seen. This T side just running rampant versus Sharks, who are very much pinned into the B site. If they can win on one front, they're going to be all right. But Yuri, trying to clear sight, has able to help. They've got that opera down. Leo off green into the one versus one, and he has that bomb at his feet. So Abel needs a crisp headshot. And he's got the cover. He's got oh. the damage. He's got the game. Furia gave up their spot at the ESL Pro League to come and represent in Brazil for their fans, for their family, for their friends, and they will be your first grand finalist. They earned it. They deserved it. The 2-0. And what a performance here on Vertigo. What a show, man. They made that look like a very fun map to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. I mean, I can't think of a better team to just be extremely tactical and interesting and unique on a map, and one that's already so new, so. And already, like, this really exciting prospect in terms of, like, creating waves in that, you know, top 15. Like, they're trying to fight their way into the next caliber of Counter-Strike. They want to be taken seriously on an international stage. If you could start throwing in, like, quick abilities to adapt, like, how fast have they learned how to play this? I don't know. You know, they're, they're already ready, they want to do this, and now they are very possibly staring a trophy in the face. But we will have a second semi-final coming up later. Before we get into that one, we've got to throw this back to the desk for them to unpack it. Dust, what did you learn about Vertigo? I learned that Furia were licking their chops whenever it got <laughs> picked by Sharks, apparently, because, man, did they look like they had a way better grasp of how to approach that map than Sharks did throughout. Yeah, I mean, Vertigo is obviously very one-sided in favor of Furia, so it's clear they were prepared. They they knew exactly what to expect when it came to oh, yeah. Vertigo, and they were they were really happy when that got through. I'm sure. I mean, on the CT side, they had two elements that were really really key. One, they were really good at controlling mid as CTs, and they had really good utility to block off B, like the standard incendiaries. I feel like they probably watched Sean Garrett's video out there because <laughs> they had perfect incendiaries on B stairs every time to kind of slow that down, and they knew how to play retake on A, and their retakes just in general were so so good, particularly on that uh, A bomb side. They retake that so many times. Even in man disadvantage situations, they were getting a lot of retakes. So I got to give them a lot of props there. And then on T, they were able to use mid control. And, and that's really hard for Terrace to use mid on Vertigo because TTs had the better timings. But they found ways to use boost, use tricky utility, and actually do a really fantastic job. And I think the biggest thing was Yuri had the most ridiculous retake. Uh, man, oh man, dude, Yuri was so nuts. And in the post plane, he came in and stopped him from getting a defuse. It was crazy. You know, I, one thing that I learned is that the audience is definitely on Furious' side. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we heard them when they were playing INTZ the other day, and it was kind of split, but it seems like a lot of those fans have now shifted over to Furious' side, which is going to be awesome when we get into that grand final well, later today. I remember talking to Beat, and he said that Brazil's very much in favor of Fury. Like, there's probably some Sharks fans out there, sure, but they, they really, really love Fury and what they've been up to lately.
It is really surprising though because Sharks performed a lot better on Inferno than I expected and so I thought, man, they, they must have something really special prepared for Vertical. And you saw signs of that, right? We saw a couple of really nice set pieces coming out of the Shark side. A lot of nice mollies and as you mentioned, probably coming from that Sean Garris video perhaps. <laughs> but these, these executes just unfortunately didn't work out. It seemed like Furia was ready for everything that they threw their way. No one fell off and died. Where was that at? <laughs> I it almost happened. It, it almost, almost happened. happened. It yeah. was like a 1v4 and he went to jump to get a kill onto the railing. And I thought if he doesn't, get, if he doesn't die before, would he have fallen off? I feel like the only that? risky time that you're going to fall and die is how it happened to Cold Zera in that show match. Because as a CT, you need to jump that gap to be able to get an incendiary fast enough on B stairs to top a T rush. And you got to land that consistently. And it's an easy jump, but when you're when it's like that's there, I mean, it's like jumping between like a canyon or something, right? Like it might be a short jump, but you know the repercussions if you miss. That doesn't exist on any other map. Well, we do have Art standing by for an interview. Congratulations on making it to the grand finals. <laughs> Thank you. I only have two questions for you, Art. First of all, were you licking your chops when you saw Sharks pick Vertigo? Did you know that you guys, was that like your trap card, like you knew you were going to get him? Or, you know, what were your thoughts going into that map? Yeah, it was kind of a trap card. We uh, practiced on Vertigo because we knew some team was about to pick for uh, on MD3 against us. So we kind of got prepared, but not really. So, yeah. Were you expecting them to pick it though? Like, or did no, you no think way. that they would go for it? Yeah, no, no, it no, was no, definitely no. a random curveball they threw. All right, so now I have to ask you this, man. Like, you came into this tournament knowing that the trophy in your cabinet was the one thing this team's been missing lately. You've done so well in North America and all the online leagues and qualifiers. Now you have your chance at a trophy. How does it feel to get that opportunity finally in the offline environment? Yeah, it really feels great. We've been expecting this for a long time, actually. Uh, so this is the biggest tournament on land we played yet. So we are really excited to win this tournament. All right, one more question for you. How much practice were you guys able to actually get on Vertigo? Because you guys had some really nice set pieces. It looked like you were prepared for everything Sharks <laughs> threw your way. So how much scrimming did you actually get to do? No, not too much. Like three maps, I think. We just uh, talk about the map a lot. We go to the server and talk a lot. Nice. Theory crafting. Always uh... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, congratulations again. We'll give you one more opportunity to say something here to the home crowd. É isso, mano. Valeu pela torcida, velho. Vamos pra final do título Brasil, porra! You gotta love it. Congratulations again. We'll let you go Thank join you. up with your teammates. Oh, man. It's such a cool story to see if you're making the finals. And we'll save that story for once we actually do the pregame segment for the grand finals. But it, it's so cool to have watched their journey in a year's time, how far they've come from coming out of nowhere to now making a DreamHack Open finals where they're going to face the winner of, you know, Avangar Valiance. And I think what's great for them is that if they win that game, that's legit. Like, those are top 15 ranked teams in the world. If you get a best of three win for them for a trophy, people do have to start talking about you.